Now, as everything in life, whether it's in the doll industry or cars or fashion or homes, uh, what becomes successful for one firm uh, has other firms immediately become involved and want to want to join in their share of it. And I just wanted to show you a few of the other art character dolls that we have um, coming to you in the Welker collection. Some really beautiful examples. This one actually is one of my favorites. Um, this is the 208 model by Kessner, a little painted eye girl. I made it lot number one in the catalog because I just think she has such a wonderful face about her, very gentle. Again, beautiful expression, very um, very compelling, very endearing, and you're drawn to them. And that's what the character makers were trying to achieve. They wanted it not to be, you know, just a, a just a not another pretty face, but something that really kind of told you a story. Another wonderful one we have here, Clay and Han and Byron Prothchild were also very, very um, prolific makers of art character dolls and, again, have beautiful expression on them. Both of these dolls, again, with the, with the painted eye, which was a an important feature of the art character movements to have the painted eye rather than the open and closed sleeping eye. And I some, I've tried to figure out myself and I, I don't know because I know that in the making of these dolls, obviously these companies were commercial firms and they had to factor in profit and loss and what would work. And I, I don't know any statistics on this and if someone does, I wish they would share them with me on which was more economical to do, the painted eye or the Cut, a, cut socket with the glass sleeping eyes. You'd, you kind of would think the sleeping eyes would be, but maybe the make the painted eye took a more highly skilled artist, and I don't know. It's an interesting thing to contemplate. Another maker whose works, I think, again, when you're always looking for where's my little niche that I can jump in, that the dolls are not particularly appreciated price-wise by this firm yet, Franz Schmidt made some of the most wonderful art character dolls, in my opinion, and this little character fellow Again, has such incredible sculpting all around by the eyes and the mouth. Wonderful, wonderful pieces. Great fellow. Just a couple other firms. Um, Theodore Hornline, a company that you will very, you'll hear very, very little of because it was a very small company and only in business for a few years. Um, but this is an example of one of the painted eye smiling characters from the Theodore Hornline. And then, of course, I mean, how do you top the works of Gebruder Heubach? Just made extraordinary pieces. Obviously had um, a little edge on the other companies because he had been making his bisque figurines for perhaps 20 years by the time the movement started. And so he already knew how to do the wonderful sculpting of the details of the hair. We have here two of the very rare examples from the 1910 period. This being a portrait doll of the Princess Juliana, who was a beloved young child in the Netherlands at that time. And if you actually would go on the internet and, and go and search for Princess Juliana and see a face of her, you'll see that this doll is her exact likeness, and it was modeled to be her. This one is just simply known as the singing Hoibach because of the expression of her mouth. And I would like to turn it around so you can see the sculpting of her hair all the way around. She's wonderful. When it comes back to you, look at how deep the eyes are set into the face with the, with the modeled um, wrinkles under the eyes and at the corners and impressed dimples in the cheek. And I'm going to tip it forward slightly so you can see the detail on the hair and on the top knot. Just absolutely wonderful. And then one I brought you to see from Mohai back because this is so totally different. One of the things that's so characteristic about them is their deep sculpting of their hair. But look at this fellow. Smooth. It's smooth. His hair is completely smooth, like he's a bald head, totally bald head, smooth, and then the hair painted on, but without the intaglio detail of the other ones. A very, very different kind of look. You can see the wonderful feathering onto his forehead. Very unusual. And then I brought you this little girl because, lest we say that Germany was the only country that were making character dolls during the 1910 period, certainly France was with their whole series of SFBJ characters, and so was Belgium. There was a maker there called Defusse, and here is one of his dolls, and I think her whole presentation is absolutely wonderful. The dolls were generally made with painted eyes, although there have been some glass-eyed ones. And again, a very, very pensive look, a different type of disc, a much grainier bisque, a much more almost textured finish. 
So it appears almost like the little girl has freckles, but a really a good look, very artistic and a wonderful expression. And then finally, we can conclude the art characters by coming back once again, where we started, Simon and Halbig. This company is so great, and lasted so long and did wonderful things. And when they finished with their art dolls, look, we're back just like Cameron Reinhardt. Let's make an art character doll with sleeping eyes. And they have their series that are usually marked with Roman numerals, one or IV or two, like with two letters up and down. And this is an example of one of them. And what a sweetheart she is. Look at the, again, the very dear, shy, pensive look, and yet really intelligent look. I know I sometimes can project personality into these dolls and I that you know somebody else might not see but then I guess that's the point of all art is that anyone's you bring your own your own background and your own um, feelings and emotions to a good piece of art and it, it brings it out of you and I think this is you may see something different in the doll but this is what I see and we're now going to talk to you about French dolls in the Welker collection a wonderful wonderful selection because it's just the best of the best um, in choosing the dolls that we're going to be in this auction, we have the dolls that, that are, represent the finest French firms and wonderful examples from each. We start, of course, with what everyone consider not everyone, many people consider, the, the top of the French market in the poupées, and that is the doll of Adelaide Hooray. And we have a wonderful example here now. You can see the very, very classic painting of her face, which is very, very typical, hooray. And the doll having just wonderful wig and wonderful presentation. And when the hoorays were made originally, they all had the gutta percha body, gutta percha body, which was a form of a rubber body and a very special technique of, of making it so that it would be fully articulated, which was a really wonderful thing that was entirely new at the time. Um, this came about because uh, Adelaide Hooray's family were a family of engineers that made furniture and they knew how to put things together to make them function as in your home as furniture. And that ability gave her the knowledge to make her dolls. Many of the rubber dolls, the rubber bodies, the Gutta Perka bodies, have, are in such a um, worn state that they have been, they were replaced perhaps a hundred years ago with wooden articulated bodies that are very similar, which is what this doll has. And I sometimes say to collectors, what do you like the most? Do you like the do you like the wooden one or do you wish you had the gutta perka? And they said, Well, you know, in a in a perfect world I'd take the gutta perka. That would be absolutely as fresh and new as the day it was made. But since that doesn't happen, then they prefer the wooden body one, which this one has with wonderful extra articulations at the ankles, at the wrists and shoulders and elbows and hips and knees, of course. A very beautiful example in a wonderful early dress of the time period. So, we have the firm of Jumeau, which had begun back in the 1840s with um, the father, Jumeau, Pierre Francois, and later moved into Emile Jumeau and his, his works. Um, the father, Emile Jum um, Pierre Francois, Jumeau did some wonderful early portrait works, and this is one of his really most outstanding portrait models that he made. And I am going to, again, turn it to the side so you're able to see the profile of her face. If I pull her hair back, you can see how that wonderful nose, just beautiful, slight little curving and turn, wonderful chin line, and again, very, very exquisite painting. One of the things I like in a doll and, you know, this again is subjective. Everyone has their own taste, but I love it when a doll has very, very thick black eyeliner like this one has because it seems to make the really beautiful paperweight eyes just pop right out then. And they, they really look very, very special. She's also wonderful because of her size, a very beautiful size, manageable for your displays, but still, because of her extra height and extra size, great depth to her modeling. Now, Around about 1875, there began to be interest in, in a child doll, not a lady doll, and making dolls that were children dolls. And a lot of firms began and kind of went into this. Some of the firms, like Jumeau and like Brew, who had previously made poupées. And we have an example of a French bébé by Leon Casimir Brew, who was kind of an interesting fellow. He was... He was pretty stubborn. 
he had been making a beautiful product. I mean, his poupées were wonderful, and the, everything about them was great. And poupées, for the most part, had kid bodies. So when he started to make his, his child bot doll, his bébé, he said, I'm not doing what those other fellows are where they're making these composition bodies and they're all jointed and all that. I'm sticking with the kid body. And he pretty much did, except for a few times when he would make a wooden articulated body. But um, he stuck with his kid body, which was one of the reasons his dolls weren't as successful as Ijimo, because people wanted to have that doll that you could move around and dress and undress easily and not have that rigid kid body. But his dolls, oh, so beautiful. And they are, by many, considered the, the most beautiful of the French dolls. And here we have an example of a, the very, very rare black brew, just gorgeous. And once again, what I said when I was showing you the um, German characters before, this is me, this is my, my sense, but everybody makes their own decision. I care a lot about flawlessness, about not having rubs, about having a beautiful, final, lustrous patina on the bisque to, to give it great depth on the, on the black dolls. And I think this doll truly achieves it beautiful complexion and wonderful eyes, painting, and a beautiful antique costume, I might also add, a wonderful doll. So they were experimenting with different types of bodies to make, and we'll stick with that for just a minute. I want to show you two really interesting bodies. We have here, again, our Emile Jumeau firm, and they've come along, and the majority of their bodies are made of composition with wooden ball joints. On very, very rare occasions, Jumeau made an all wooden body. It's basically the same style, same shape as the composition, but it is entirely of wood, and that's what we have here. And I mean, the, it's just absolutely wonderful because of the durability and the posing. And when you turn it around, you'll see right here the signature, the Jumeau signature, not stamped on the wood, but incised into the wood very, very rare to find on his early examples and certainly a luxury one. I will point out that this new little girl does have a complete costume with lots of underwear and things and this absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous original dress. And then Okay, this falls in the category of it's the only one I've ever seen. I'm not saying that I have seen everything in the world or that other people couldn't call me tonight and say, Florence, I, have, I know of one, but I'm saying in 45 years of cataloging, well, no, no, I have seen this doll before because we actually did sell this doll before about five years ago. And it has now come back to us in this auction. And this doll has the Clement blown leather body. Clement was a shoemaker, a cobbler, a fine craft, craftsman maker of leather shoes in Paris. He knew how to make molds to create the shoes around and then to stitch the shoes together and to have just a perfectly soft and wonderful shoe. Now, I don't know what, he, what, what his connection with the doll industry was, where he got the notion, who will ever know? I mean, hopefully someday we'll find out. But he decided that he could make a doll body, a blown leather, hollow leather the same way he made his shoes. And he made them first as a poupée. And then in this, the only example I have, and by the way, the poupée Clement body dolls are extremely rare also, but I have never seen another one as a bébé. This is absolutely wonderful. Now, I wish you could, I wish you could um, pick up this body because you would see how light it is. It's very, very light, very um, easily posed in different things. And one of the identifying features on it is, if you look very, very carefully here, you will see the seam where it was sewn together and then finally finished over. So when it is actually completed, you don't see the seam at all. Just an extremely rare doll. Now, moving beyond the body, take a look at that face. Absolutely fabulous. And once again, that dark, dark eyeliner that really pops up those pale blue eyes. This doll comes with her own little chair, her own little French chair with the rose tufting and her own original oval shaker box with 
an assortment of original costumes. It's a wonderful, wonderful doll. Now, if we were to go to the very peak of the market, we are going to show you this doll, and I'm going to lift her wig to show you her markings. And you can see it very clearly there. One and the letter H. And this stands for Halipo, Aristide Halipo, who was a French doll maker who created this beautiful bébé. Again, extremely rare, very few appear, and always just so beautiful. So absolutely wonderful to find. And we're very lucky we have this gorgeous doll with her wonderful original dress. And let me just turn her to the profile so you can again see the depth of her paperweight eyes. She's brown-eyed, and it's very, very hard to find wonderful brown eyes that have a, like a, a depth to them that are not just thick black, thick brown, but actually have like am, a little amber highlights in them, and it really brings it out. Beautiful blushing on her cheek. She is a really special doll. If you were looking to ever own just one Halipo in your collection, one H doll as she is known, this could be a perfect choice. Okay, we're going to talk to you a little bit. I have in this auction, I can't believe we have, we can go two years sometimes and never have a single doll by the French doll maker, Andre Toulier. Dolls no, marked AT, known as the AT dolls. And in this wonderful collection, we have three different offerings for you of the Toulier dolls. The largest has the most spe spectacular eyes and once again, thick, dark, eyeliner around them, absolutely spectacular. Deep, deep paperweight eyes. I'm going to turn the doll so you can see, again, the depth of the paperweight from the side. And just that, just that wonderful look. It's so hard to describe it. It really is. It has, um, it's, so, it's so compelling, it's so dear, it's, so, it's intelligent and um, gentle at the same time, and yet very, very captivating. And it's achieved by the very superb modeling. People use sometimes the phrase, I've heard this used over the years, first from the mold, and first, you know, first of the casting. And I'm not sure exactly what that means, except that I know in, in very, very cheap doll firms, they would use a mold over and over and over again, and so it really would lose its definition once it became a doll. This one is one that you could call first from the mold. The definition is so crisp, so clear, absolutely stunning. And if you have looked at her costume as well, absolutely wonderful, including her little rosette decorated shoes. Absolutely grand. I'll turn it around again so you can see her wonderful bonnet that almost forms into like a cape at the back of her head with the silk fringe edging and the embroidery. And just one more time to remark very, very thick, dark eyeliner. We have a smaller size AT also that might appeal to someone, and this is a blue-eyed girl, and she is really beautiful as well. What I particularly like about her, in addition to her wonderful expression, wonderful face, and great size, is this original costume, which is just superb. Let me turn it around so you can see it in the back as well. Bringing back here, showing you the little undergarments, little shoes, leather shoes, the wireframe bonnet, just fabulous. And then look at this guy. Talk about dolls you could hold in the palm of your hand. This little tiny AT is so wonderful. Has the greatest face, very, very deep paperweight eyes. Um, I have, when I catalog, I try to talk on dolls that to me have the absolutely wonderful dolls. I call them splendid eyes, and he definitely falls in the category of a doll with splendid eyes. A wonderful example. And again, just beautiful bisque. I love his little costume. Everything about him is a great, great presentation. I could go on for an hour 
talking about this doll and why I think it's so special. The rarity of the maker, the quality of the bisque, extremely rare original uh, the size with the original body, absolutely wonderful. The presentation, it's compelling, it draws you. There is a story in his face. Now we have three other, a um, few other French dolls I want to show you quickly because we have a wonderful representation. The Bebe Mother Row, again, to me, a very underappreciated doll in terms of, of collector interest in it, partly because the doll is so rare. So few examples come up, and so collectors don't know how to respond to it because they will look for a brew or a jumeau. But the Bebe Mother Row is an extremely refined doll, wonderful and notable for, as you can see in this doll, brown, very large eyes. They tend to have these very, very dramatic eyes, and they tend to have very pale bisque to contrast it with a plump lower cheeks, and it's a, just a wonderful look all the way around. I love this little girl because I think her um, costume, her antique costume is really, really fine, and her presentation all over is just, just superb. There are several wonderful brews in the auction, and I brought this one to show you uh, because I, again, am drawn to her eyes. I must be going through my eye period or something here now because I keep mentioning the eyes, but her eyes are really wonderful, very, very great depth in them, and she has these perfect little bisque hands, which are wonderful, and she has her wonderful antique costume, which I will show you all around. It's a beautiful girl. I love the si these sizes. They are such a beautiful display size. And then in the, with the little ones, a wonderful, wonderful little Steiner. Little tiny Steiner of a rare model with um, her own little fancy hat, beautiful little dress. Everything about this doll is superb. Rarity, size, beauty, costume, condition, top line all the way along. Very, very fine. So I wanted to show you the big two dolls uh, that to me have wonderful couturier costumes and other great features too, but I wanted you to see the costuming because everybody loves original doll costumes and these dolls are very special because of it. After about 1886, the Tet model became the, the basic um, model for Jameau. He made some variations in decoration and style. He did some that were marked most, were marked with his stamping, Tet Jameau, when he would advertise in the department stores, don't buy any without my name on them. But sometimes he had a special commission to make dolls uniquely for an exhibition, a store, an event. For example, the BL, the Bebe Louvre doll. Um, this doll has the mark, this Jameau has the markings RR. And to this date, we have not been able to identify who, that, who those initials stand for. Um, whether it was a store or a special commission event, we don't know. Definitely a Jumeau. And a slightly different look, very rich features, very beautiful. But this example, take a look at the costume. Wow. This is a Jumeau original couturier costume. Absolutely beautiful in every way. right down to the undergarments, signed Jumeau shoes, and let me show you, look at the detail around the arms. This is a little embroidery into the silk on the sleeves and on the yoke, and then the ruching here, and then let me turn it around so you can see how wonderfully this costume is made. Typical features of Jumeau, what seems to be very simple, actually is perfectly fitted to the doll with the three little tapered darts here at the back and the buttons, and just grand, almost like a little bustle sort of back. Very, very wonderful, wonderful costume. And then what many people consider the, the best of the Jumeau ever made, his Bebe Triste, modeled for him by famous French sculptor Cario Berlures, uh, the original model, and made for him over a period of ooh, about eight years, which was a long time for a luxury model to be made really his signature model. Before we talk about the costume, take a look at the side view of that face. Absolutely wonderful. Rounded, little soft, upturned nose. You can see the depth of the paperweight eyes, I hope. Slightly plump cheeks, slightly double chin, but not too much, just perfect. The ears are separately sculpted and then applied to the doll, which give them a very, very realistic look, and then have a wonderful blushing on them 
that matches the cheeks and matches the rose eyeshadow. Very beautiful doll. With her original body with those fat little limbs that are indicative of the early period of the Bebe Triste. Now, look at the costume, and then you see how great, how much better can anything get. This costume is from Original Jumeau Couturier costume, and look closely at all of the details of it, the feather stitching, the fine lace, the patterned maroon silk, the peach silk accents. And coming around the double tier on the front, and in the back, the little jacket back, which has the wonderful tails, and then it has the pleats below, and then it has the attached lace babelet. Absolutely wonderful. And has the matching socks and the French leather shoes. I think you could never have too many Jumeau trees, particularly when they're looking like this, greeting you when you come in your door at night. Very wonderful doll. Gebruder Heubach um, came along and made their share of googly dolls. And here we have three examples of the works from that firm because this is another firm that they saw a profitable um, craze, something that people were looking for. So they came and did their three wonderful examples right here. And we have a little guy's another winker. So the winking concept was a popular one. We have a little girl with this wonderful model top knot. And even to the details of curls at the nape of her neck. And then the other just really wonderful fellow with big, big, deeply set intaglio painted eyes. I, we have also in the collection a series of the elite googlies with the molded helmets, including a two-faced, the very rare two-faced one, and this wonderful fellow with his helmet with the emblazoned eagle on it and wonderful expression. And then I save these, they're not googlies, but I need your help. So I'm hoping somebody's going to call and give me the answer. These were a wonderful little pair of dolls in the Welker collection. And I'm cataloging them away. They're not an uncommon mold. They're um, Heubach Koppelsdorf 320, I believe. And it's not an uncommon mold, but what I loved about them was they were so totally original in their wonderful folklore costumes, and if you could see them as crisp and fresh as the day they came out of the factory. Just wonderfully detailed. And then I picked up the girl, and I looked, and here on the inside of her petticoat is this label. Bebe Brandeis, Prague. So I went and looked, and indeed, these are some of the national costumes of Prague. In fact, her, um, her headpiece, her coif, that pattern is very, very stylistic and very definitely from a particular region of Czech at the time. And, but Bebe Brandeis, what is that? And why Bebe? That's, that's using the French. So there definitely was a move at this time to try to capitalize on the popularity of French dolls. Um, Heinrich Handwerk named some of his dolls Bebe Cosmopolite, but what is this Bebe Brandeis? I started looking, I tried to find a toy store in Prague named Brandeis, I found nothing. I found a few interesting leads that would be a really big leap that I don't want to make at this time. I'm calling on all of you, I need your help. Tell me what you know about Bebe Brandeis. In the meantime, they're wonderful dolls, they're great mysteries, and that's part of the great fun of doll collecting.